Good evening, everyone. Glad you can make it to tonight's uh, artist talk for the exhibition By the Light of the Moon. This exhibition features artists Linda Dubin Garfield, Laura Mays, Dan Miller, and Martha Workajowski. So both Linda and Laura are here on Zoom video. Dan is with us by phone. And unfortunately, Martha can't make it tonight. So we'll just have to, you know, take a look at her work uh, as is. So this uh, Zoom is being recorded. So we will edit and uh, put it on our YouTube channel so you can watch it later or send it to your friends. Um, the exhibition is up uh, through March 26. And every so hope you can come down and see it. If not, you can see everything uh, on our website. So I'm going to spotlight uh, Tina's video and she's going to stroll through the show and then we will have a, a free form discussion. So the very first piece is by Dan Miller and it's uh, the Ryder portrait, Dan. Would you like yes. to like, Maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and then about this portrait. Well, basically, I've been teaching at the Academy for what's getting close to 60 years. Wow. And I felt that we you couldn't possibly have a show dedicated to moons without Albert Ryder. He's the patron saint of moons. And I learned all about the beauty of moons through Ryder. And I, I go to Maine in the summer, and the, the moons in Maine are some of the most beautiful I've ever seen. So almost everything I have in the show is dedicated to uh, to being in Maine, animals in Maine, views of Maine. And you work on the wooden block. Yeah, I cut on just pine boards. And started doing woodcuts when I was a student at the academy in my second year. Beautiful. And just felt that somehow there was something to be said in that manner that I couldn't say, maybe with a paintbrush or any other way, and I've continued. So your prints, you do like a combination. There's portraits, there's landscapes, then there's birds and animals. Yeah, I'm a, a ruined English major. So I, I do a lot of portraits of poets, writers, or, or people I think are interesting, especially with people with, with unusual faces. And you're working from, I would, I guess, like a photographic source? Yeah, I, I'll try to get, if I mention somebody's, I'd like to read biography and then I'll, I'll try to do a portrait of the person I've just read about. Do you use all the color? Do you have different ones for the different colors, or do you put it all in the same block of wood? Uh, every color is cut from a separate block. Wow. And some of those landscapes, I've done landscapes with maybe oh, 40 different steps. So it, gets, it can get awfully complicated. Yeah, yeah we're going to, we're sailing over to a landscape right now. Uh, Dan, we're looking at the um, Bar Island Moon. Yeah, that's the property I bought in Maine was on, I uh, probably had been an island. And the Army Corps of Engineers dredged the harbor to make it a little bit deeper for the fishing boats. And they put the dredges on top of the sandbar, so, and then they uh, put a permanent road in so you get out there 24 hours a day. And uh, people sold me the the center of that island. I, I own a, a strip of land about four acres that goes to the back of the island all the way to the shore. And it goes through a bog. And it's it's the most, some of the most beautiful little real estate you could imagine. That, that bog is ever moist. Uh, incredible growth there, pitcher plants, bog orchids. Uh, people come from all over, uh, nature groups come there every year to to look at it. And 
there's a little square print tree of, of trees called uh, Gibbous Trees, Gibbous Moon, a Gibbous Moon. And I had a friend in Maine who told me how much she loved Gibbous Moon, and I didn't know what on earth a Gibbous Moon was. So we looked it up in the dictionary. There were. And at that time, was, I was working on that print. And uh, 50 years later, those trees have not changed the iota. The bog there uh, between my house and the shore is it, it's, it's so rich and such a, a struggle for life, nothing really changes. It, 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 like looking at bonsai trees. Huh. So, Dan, so everything, everything you have in the show is, is just inspired by summers I'm able to spend in Maine. And the beautiful offshore islands, and this, it's a, uh, an incredible place. Do you keep your plates after you're through? Yeah, I just, I shatter the windows, close it up, but I have friends there to look after it. Oh, okay. But I, I built the place myself. Laura, do you mean the the printing plates? The printing plates. Yeah, your blocks. Well, I, I, well, I I built the house, and I have two studios there. I do sculpture in one studio and prints in another studio. And then after you finish a print, do you hang on to the wood block, or do you reuse them? Well, what I what I've been doing up there is. I the blocks are are fairly black from the over inking and cleaning them. So I, I I put white on the block, paint it a flat white, so the white goes into the cavities. Let that dry, and then I reink the block so you have a contrast. And I've I've been selling the key block through the gallery up in Maine. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, how about that? It's because they, if if you printed from the key block, you wouldn't get much. And then I right. did, I destroyed the color blocks. I cut them up and used them for kindling. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thanks, Dan. So, Laura, we're looking at uh, your large uh, blended layers painting. Can you talk about it? But first, could you tell us a bit about yourself? Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Uh <laughs> Um, I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in printmaking, actually, and um, I spent equal time at Northern in painting, uh, so although I didn't get a double major. I didn't, I, you know, the, 10 years was enough. And so I... Michigan University? Northern Michigan University, yes. In Marquette. You have Pardon a me? master's degree, Linda? Uh... I'm sorry. Did you get a yeah, no. have an advanced degree? I do not have a degree in art. No. Okay. So it's Laura Laura Mays who's speaking now, Dan. So Laura, you have the BFA, right? Is it BFA? I have a BFA. Yeah. And then I have a master's, but it's in counseling and psychology and in educational leadership. Uh. So it doesn't really. In some ways, it applies because you seem to work with. I work with emotions uh, when I do my paintings and prints, and it's all spontaneous. There's no preconceived idea or drawing sketches. Nothing. It's just a work in progress. Work as you go. And you're trained as a painter and a printmaker. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So in both processes sort of feed each other? Well, your... they, they, they overlap. You, you know, I, I learned um, with painting or with printmaking, you can overlap your inks. And in painting with acrylics, you can mix it with a, a medium of some sort and thin the paint so that you can get that glazing technique as you would in printmaking. So it each lends itself to the other, each process. Yeah, I found, you know, after painting, after then doing printmaking for a while, it sort of made me think about color 
differently, like applying color in layers and stages. Absolutely. I think you did a lot of that too when you were at Northern. Didn't you? You use like glazing and well, I uh at that time I was just learning oil painting, so it was sort of color next to color. I hadn't really figured out glazing yet. Oh, okay. Until later. So I um was sort of fumbling around with it. But I was watching what you were doing. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was trying to like, we always work learn it. together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it was a nice setup because, you know, the private studios were next to the, like the class studios. So you sort of run into everybody all the time. Right. So I think we're going to look at, yeah, your three small ones. Okay. There again, that's all spontaneous and with working with the theme of the moon. And I was watching television shows about Egyptian mummies and um, I, I kind of like the detail, the um, lines that you could make and have it show up in your work. I do a lot of, I call it um, airbrushing, not airbrushing, it's dry brushing. And it gives it a softer, look or softer tone. Yeah. I, do, I like to experiment with technique. And how do you get the like raised, like embossed effect? That's gesso. And then you work with it on the canvas. And I have an old credit card that I, <laughs> I like using it. It uh, moves the gesso around and you just let it dry. And it has this, uh, raised area that you can work with. And again, it's all spontaneous. It, it, you do the gesso, on, I paint everything black first, and then I apply the gesso and work with it. And then after it dries and you start painting, you see something that you didn't even know was there. It just develops on its own. On this particular painting, it's, it's got those little shapes and colors, different color blends, along with a metallic leaf. I like working with that. And Mike got me interested in that and Klimt, I think in, um, he, he was mentioning something about uh, Klimt's paintings with the gold and, uh, and who was 20 that? years later. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, things take a while to gestate. It, yeah, it took me a long time. Uh, well, they're really but beautiful. The, pardon me? I say they're really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I like, I like the, I like to experiment too with the different uh, mediums and techniques, color. So... That's about it with those. Great. Thank you, Laura. Mm -hmm. uh, Linda, we're looking at one of your pieces, the uh, Starry Night Full Moon one. Right. So would you tell us about it, but also about yourself, like what your background is? And right. how you I was an art major in high school, but when I went to um, consider colleges, my parents absolutely would not let me apply to art school. It was the time of the hippies and they were taking drugs and that was not going to happen. So I went to Temple and um, at that time Tyler was in Elkins Park, but there were a few professors that taught subjects at the main campus and I took whatever they had. And then I would go at night like to Fleischer when I lived in Center City. And then when I moved to the um, main line. I started going to the main line art center. And I also went and took a course with Tony Rosati at the uh, mm -hmm. academy and a couple times actually. And Mo Brooker and Francine Shore and Christine Stoughton, Carson Fox were my teachers uh, through the years. And um, I just fell in love with the press. I loved the press. 
course, the last few years, I couldn't use the big press. I don't have one of my own. I would rent the one at the Mainline Art Center, but you couldn't do it because of COVID. So I started using collage a lot more and doing hand printing. So on that one on the left there, you see the uh, paper in the middle. I printed that myself because with using a um, William Morris uh, um, leaf pattern, and I would make the paper myself. Uh, but I, I enjoy um, the tearing and creating the lines and the textures that I get. And this series, I usually work in a series, and this series is really um, instigated by the James Webb Space Telescope and seeing their pictures. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it, sh it on Facebook, I get to see the Hubble and the way we used to take pictures. And now this one that can take it even further, like millions of miles away and hundreds of years away because it takes that long for the light to, to come here. And it just fascinates me. So I did a whole series and I'm still playing around with them. I'm still doing them. I did a couple today um, of a starry sky and a moon in various different um, phases, which is always so intriguing. I love how it, it uh, waxes and wanes. So, and I made several sh smaller ones and then I did some bigger ones as well. But uh, I just, uh, I'm fascinated by the night sky. I remember when I was eight or nine years old, one of my neighbors was a college kid who was very interested in astronomy. And I would come out and he would point out, there's the Big Dipper and there's the Little Dipper and there's Orion and he has a belt. You know, I would look for these stars. And now we can just see galaxies, hundreds and thousands of galaxies. I mean, it's just mind boggling. So, uh, and I try to uh, create art that uh, creates an appreciation of natural beauty and a concern for its pre preservation. I'm hoping that, you know, we take care of things so they'll be here in the future. Yeah. Linda, Linda, do you get, 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 Linda, it's good to hear some of the, the names you mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, the the print colony in Philadelphia is pretty small. I'm I'm going to have lunch with Tony tomorrow. Tony Rosati tomorrow. You tell him I said hello. I don't know if he'll remember I, me. I'll, I'll, I took a couple of classes with him. I will tell Good him guy. that Tony Tony remembers. Good guy, very good guy, and a wonderful Linda, teacher. Linda, do you work with oil or water based ink? Well, I started working with oil for the first three years and my nails and hands were falling apart. It was terrible. <laughs> so I switched, I, I took a course, uh, like a workshop course with the woman who created Akua Color, which is a water-based uh, soy kind of uh, ink. And uh, I've been using water-based ink since then. I don't use oil. Yeah, it's easier to clean up. You don't have to use um, scary kinds of materials that, to do the cleaning. And I can actually get manicures and my nails look nice. Uh. <laughs> so. Have you ever tried printing on unflavored gelatin? No. If you, if I used water-based, I had the same problem, I didn't have a press. They're too expensive, too large, and no place to keep it. And I made my plates out of unflavored gelatin uh -huh. and used water-based ink. And um, I really enjoyed the process. And I've been, when I print, that's what I do now. I don't use oil or any other thing. Right. Now, is that like the jelly plates that you can buy? Is no idea. You make your own with unflavored gelatin. Oh. And if you look online, you might be able to find that um, process. It's uh, it's fascinating to work with. Thanks. I'll look it up. And you get that 
immediate um, print to the image. Anyway, that's just a thought. As you said, you didn't have a press to use. Right, right. But now, uh, actually, now I'm renting the, uh, in fact, next week I'm going to um, use the press at Mainline. Now they're letting people go there, you know, because things are nice. No flies. It's nice. So. And uh, in between, or, uh, just to the right of Linda's pieces, this is one of Martha Workajowski's paintings. I really so. like that one. Yeah, that's beautiful. What is, is it oil? It's oil, oil on canvas. So that is fantastic. Yes, yeah, she's very good. Um, I, you know, I tend towards nocturnal subjects with cars <laughs> myself. So yeah. I'm yeah. very uh, taken yeah. by her work. She accentuates the color you know, in the work, and it's usually devoid of people, which gives them a sort of a solitary feeling, not ominous, just, you know, quiet, but that color Beautiful. Is, is really, um, I, I really like, so that's, you know, that the image we're looking at, Dan, it's like two cars in a that's on your postcard, I think, isn't it? Um, yes, yes, that's the one. Yeah, I know it, yeah. And, I, uh, I recognize it immediately from your description, yes. And it's got that pink sky, so it's like, you know, the few minutes between sunset and dusk when everything... Yes. Is. Well, it is sort of ominous. It uh, gave me a bit of a chill. Uh, maybe, <laughs> a little bit. It might have yeah. to do with the tree, because the tree's just sort of standing there... And then the two cars are like pointing at you. So it could. Yes. <laughs> and notice <laughs> the frame she has on it. It's, it's quite interesting. It's a shaped frame. She likes, you know, oh. mid-century modern furniture and such. So she brings that like aesthetic um, here, which is kind of neat. It's interesting, yeah. So she went to school at RISD, Rhode Island School of Design. She went there for, for illustration, actually, but she was painting mm. all the way through. And then uh, yeah. she lives in Bucks County. I, do, I know her originally from Academy because she used to take classes with her sisters there before going to, yeah. to uh, art school. That's a nice uh -huh. piece. Yeah, we're looking at another a small one. Uh, this one is called October. So it's another oil on canvas. So they really glow. You know, the color is it the the light like just shines. It's beautiful. Yeah, she really, you know, intensifies the contrast and color. And burns out like all unnecessary detail. Like she's not fussing with like, you know, each brick or things like that. Everything is like boiled down to its essential shape state. And we'll swing around and see a couple more. What number is that? This is four. This is called uh, Hope. Hope Street. Hope Street. That's nice. They could be anywhere in mm -hmm. any that building. Yeah, it's got sort of a universal quality yeah. to it, but a you know a disappearing type cityscape. Mm -hmm. And this is called Procession. I believe this one was an image she created from her time in uh, Rhode Island. Uh. 
But notice how carefully considered the color is here. It's not like just the street, for example, is like one color. It's like it's modulated and changes as you progress from the light into the shadow. You know, she's very attuned to color changes and mixing and intensities. What did you say her back background was? Uh, she took some classes at the Pennsylvania Academy. Um, oh, that's right. In history. And then went for undergraduate at uh, Rhode Island School of Design for BFA. And here's... You know when she was at the Academy? I believe it was like 99 in the early 2000s. Okay. She just took some like CE classes there. I see, okay. Uh -huh. And then she, you know, she wasn't taking class anymore and I, we, I didn't hear from her. And then she came back, I guess, from Rhode Island and was a fully formed painter. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. She, uh, she's <clears throat> she's in, based in Bucks County. She's doing really well. She's been in uh, several shows of ours. Uh, she's been in at least three or four group shows. So we're always uh, happy to include her in things. When she has her signs, um, signage on there, the uh, above the door, does she print anything on it or is it actually just a, a no, few or? It's, it's a blank. It's blank. That's it's just what I a paint. That makes yeah. a difference, I think. Yeah, I'd rather look at that than reading some message on there. Yeah, when you put text in it, it, it changes because then all of a sudden you're reading something. Mm -hmm. So here she doesn't allow that. She doesn't give you that uh, exit. You know, you're, you're aware of the painting at all times, you know, right. it doesn't give you clues. Uh, and there's no people either to latch onto. So you're, you know, trying to figure out, well, what's happening here? So they, they do have a narrative quality. Like, is something going to happen? Is something just happened? I mean, you, so you sort of have to, it forces you to... Uh, Use your imagination, <laughs> wonder yes. where, where it is. They feel... They feel a little bit ap apocalyptic. Do you think? Do you think apocalyptic? Yes. How so? A little bit. <clears throat> How so? Well, when you don't see people, you think something's happening. Or happened to them, huh? <laughs> yeah, it makes you feel a little, little un uneasy. Yeah, like the day after or the body snatchers or something? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. And it's it, there's darkness all around and then that little bit of light, you know, that light there. So what's that yes. darkness yeah. you don't know? Yeah. Well, in this one... And they're very you, beautiful. You see that pattern on the pavement of light and it almost has like a, like a web quality or water quality. You know, it's it has an abstract right. thing that uh, that's beyond just recording facts about the urban landscape. Look at all the colors she has in there. That is really amazing. I really like her work. Beautiful. So are there any questions from the audience? Audience, I know you're out there, even though you're not showing yourself. <laughs> any questions for the artists? Anthony, how about you? Am I, it is uh, all amazing work. Uh, where's my camera? And to get to see it live is, you know, uh, 
the best way to see it, I've, I went through the show about three times and I took my students through it from uh, my painting class there. And uh, some of them walked away with the ideas. I mean, some great conversation. Uh, I, I think I agree with Dan on that, that one thing. When there's no people in the painting, it's kind of gives you the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. It's, I, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, even in still life, I keep looking for bugs, like the Dutch painting. You know, they're just the only life there is a former uh -huh. flower, and it's in a vase. All, all uh, uh, it's like it, it was. If you do private teaching, Anthony, or I, no, to I, a school I, at Mike's at the Cerulean Gallery. Yes, Anthony. Academy uh, enrollment's low, so I have. Oh, great. Anthony's yeah, I like teaching a Wednesday teaching. class with us right now. It's wonderful. Oil, oil painting and layers. So we do wonderful. Classes and workshops uh, yeah. as well. So Dan, we're looking at one of your prints again. This one is the, which one? Moon Awakened Bird. Moon Awakened Bird. Yes. And the grain of the block is very pronounced. Yeah. And do you? Well, I, I, I do that. How, how do you do it? I, <clears throat> I I go to Home Depot and select the boards. Yes. And try to get boards that have a history. I can take an etching needle and scratch along the lines to heighten the lines and also wire brush the boards. I really work on them very hard. Mm -hmm. So they'll print. If you just if you just print a board, it, you don't get a lot of contrast. And then I also do over printing. Sometimes I'll, I'll print a, uh, an initial color and then print something else on top. So you enhance the and great texture, beautiful texture. But it's just bringing out what's there. It, it's as though. Uh, George Nakashima used to talk, the wonderful furniture maker used to say, he, he, he allowed the boars to speak. Makes sense. And if, if you don't work on the board and help it, it won't talk. <laughs> no. yeah, I know that effect, you know, I, I work a lot with graining combs. You know, yes. Like antiquing. But I use uh, like the Martha Stewart rubber ones in painting, so I don't go right through there. But when you yeah. create those kind of grains, it's really uh, adds another dimension to to my work. Yeah, and it's just and it's just beautiful. It's just yeah. like 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 a, a miracle of nature that's taking place within a tree. Right. Right. Yeah. So Dan, do you draw directly on the board, or do you transfer an image? Uh, pardon me? Do you transfer your imagery or do you draw directly on the board? Directly on the board. I, I, I showed earlier with Gene Shaw at your gallery. Yes, last year. Yeah, and, and Gene is a realist. In other words, if he draws something, he wants it, if the porch is on the right side of a house, he wants it to be on the right side of the house in the print. But if you draw directly on the board, it'll be reversed. We argue about I don't think it matters one way or the other. But I, I, there's a beauty in just drawing on the wood. I don't like to draw on a piece of paper and then have to transfer it. Uh-huh. It's more direct. Yes. And we know that, we know that our, only, our own opinion is the one that matters. <laughs> yes. <that's... laughs> we, we don't listen to anybody else. Now here's a nice bird. Yeah. And we're, looking, we're looking at the full moon, full moon under right now. Yes. I, I like the way that the moon gets caught in the trees up in Maine. Do you overprint the moon or do you stencil? Sometimes, it yeah. Very you... often do. It's just plenty different with every print. It's hard for me to see the brain. Oh, there. But, but wood has such a wonderful message. 
Oh, that is nice. And it needs to be helped a little bit. That's pretty sad. That bird looks sad. <laughs> yes. Well. Well done. They're they're self portraits. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and some are more naturalistic and some are more stylized. That's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I go back and forth. You, 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 need, you need a little subtle differences in your work. Otherwise, you get stymied. Right. And yet, I, I don't want to be a naturalist. I want to be something else. Yeah, speaking of nature, so Laura, Dan mentioned being inspired by Maine. I mean, how do you feel the northern Michigan landscape like affects you? Well, if I had to depend on northern Michigan landscapes, they'd be all white with all yeah. the snow. That have. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah, right um, now. But, you know, I mean, like just the being surrounded by bush and Yes, no, no. It's, it has an influence on everything I do. Um, I've been, I've traveled to all the states except for three. And so my memory um, is pretty clear on areas of this country that I found most interesting to actually paint. And um, it just comes, it comes to mind when you're, doing a piece uh, I, a lot of my um images like the one that's in front of you there forgot the name of it um there's water i like to include water because we're surrounded by hundreds of lakes here well, and, and, yeah. and lake superior lake superior and the um trees and the growth around and then the sunsets are beautiful and especially in September so it it, it all has a special place in my memory are you are you a fan of Ernest Hemingway Ernest Ernest, Ernest Hemingway. Hemingway his early early work was dealt with upper Michigan oh did it his early short stories Huh, I didn't know. Oh, I, I wasn't aware of that. Hmm. Yeah, he was I'll there one to, story. To hmm. I'll have to research that. Oh, Ernest. So, Linda, you mentioned you're going to return to press printing again? Yes. A combination. I do press printing and then I do collage on, on it. Sometimes it's just by itself, but a lot of times I do add collage. So this, not, this is medium in that the sky I I painted and used uh, ink. I don't have paint, I use ink. And and then I tore paper to do the collage part. And then I um I put a usually I put a glaze of a transparent uh, base or something with maybe a little tint of a color on uh, the whole thing. Are and all the colors, of, all of the different colors, are they all your, from your prints or do you find different paper? Uh, I find it? different paper or I create my own paper. Uh, okay. So the solid colors I bought and it's... Okay a store-bought paper and then the uh one that's i printed on i i printed on that to make it what i wanted it to be i like those leaves on there you yeah. printed that one didn't you i printed it it's a uh stencil that I, or it's not a stencil it's a silk screen that i made of a print of uh, william morris is one of his patterns okay now, what about I do you have, um, do you just, how do you get the stars or the moon on there? I put the paper on the floor. I stand on a ladder and I dribble, you know, I shake a, a toothbrush, <laughs> toothbrush down 
to splatter. Oh, that's interesting. Well, it works well. Thank you. Yes, it's Do you size your paper? I I don't know. Okay. It's not that wet. It's it's you know it's All not right. a wet process. Uh huh. But, and what I do is I, I play around with it. I have it there. I leave it there a few days. I come back and look at it. I move things around a little. I don't, I don't like um, glue it down right away. I play with it. So I'm sure that it's what I like. All right. Well, are there any uh, last questions either from the audience or from the artists for each other i just wanted to mention that i'm coming down to the gallery on wednesday the 22nd from 10 30 to noon because i couldn't be at the opening and some of my friends want to come and you're all invited to come i'll have light snacks and we'll look at the art and talk about it and um and look in the gift shop i'm looking forward to that too <laughs> And so remind us, what's the date again? The date it's Wednesday, um, March 22nd, 10.30 right. to noon. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. I'll bring my class in, too. Yeah, bring them. That's right. Uh, Anthony will be right. with class. I, I can bring some snow. <laughs> yeah, are you going to, like, uh, take the bullet train down from Republic? Uh, no, <laughs> they have trains running here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd love to be there right now. Yes, it would be. Well, it, here it's uh, the trees are starting to bloom. Daffodils are up. Can you believe it? Wow. Yeah. Well, we yeah. have, I have so much, so much snow plowed in my driveway that it's almost up to the top of my garage door oh, if, that, if, that, if that's how <laughs> it's and we're going to get 26 more inches oh, so, uh, oh my oh my oh my <laughs> yeah. I, I i should be used to it by now but i'm not that's really tough but california is doing much worse than here so i don't feel so bad no yeah. Well, all right. So we'll uh, call it here. Thanks so much to oh, I, Linda. Dan. I, I appreciate I, I appreciate meeting all of you in this manner. Nice meeting you too. Even though it's not, it seems a little impersonal. But and I I like the, the enormous variety of 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 method that we're all talking about. It's wonderful. And I love the way you hung the show. It looks beautiful. I'm looking forward well, thank to thank you. And thank you, Mike and Tina, for having me in the show. Oh, thank you. It's uh, our pleasure. It's a wonderful show. And uh, <laughs> gang, if you can get here to see it, please come on down. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, here's another person. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Okay, everyone. Thanks. Great again. to hear everybody. Thanks so bye. much. Okay. Yep. Bye -bye. Have a long night. Okay. Bye bye. 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 <laughs>